Here we go. We made it. We're back. We're live. It's Wednesday, three o'clock. You know what we do at Blue Ridge Winery. The mission is always to add value to your life. Guys, thank you for being here. I'm so grateful. I know the team's out there watching. It'll pop up one second. But guys, with a show of hands, <laughs> with the rain this past weekend and going into the Monday, who's been feeling a little bit down? Anybody? Anybody? I know I was. Yesterday afternoon, guys, Monday afternoon, I, I was not myself. I wasn't. I gotta admit it. I'm walking around going, man, why do I, why do I feel, so, why do I feel like this? What's going on? Mary Wayne, what's happening? I see you. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like, man, what's going on? I asked mama. I go, mama, what's going on? She goes, I don't know. Go, maybe it's the rain. I go, maybe it's the rain. There I am finding an excuse. Maybe it's the rain. Kathy, I see you. What's happening, Kathy? So then when I did, Arlene's here. I see you, Arlene. The team is together. What's happening? Tina's out there. Tina's still in wedding mode. I love that, Tina. Oh, my God. It was so much fun. Oh, my God. Greg, dude, I see you, man. What's going on, Greg? Kathy, I love it. Oh, my God. Gerald's out there. So you can picture it. I'm kind of feeling down. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So what I did... I got my phone, I got my earbuds in, and I went on YouTube, and I picked, a, I picked a, an upbeat, motivating presentation, I hit play, and guess what happened? Everything changed in my life. Within 10 minutes, all of a sudden, Randy's feeling great, we're flying high, I'm weed whacking the grass, having a great time, and this talk came out of it. I hope you love this. It's so much fun. It's called The Law of Attraction. Now, follow me here, okay? You know, I normally don't talk like this, but it's called The Law of Attraction, what we're putting out in the world, we will soon be receiving ourselves. We all agree with this. You may call it the law of attraction. You may call it karma. You may call it blessings. You may call it curses. But whatever you call it, we all know that what you give, you will receive. This is the way the world works, right? With a raise of hands. Who says yes? Everyone says yes. <laughs> I, love I love that Tina's out there. So no matter what, right? I think, <laughs> I think we all agree there's a correlation between what we project to the world and what, we come back, what comes back at us. I always say it all the time, the world is a mirror and it's reflecting us back at us. We all live in the same world, but no one lives in the same world because we all live in the world that we create with our own minds. I love the hearts. You're so with me on this, right? In fact, I don't think that we get the life that we want, not even a little. Nobody gets the life they want. But you know what we always get? We get the life that we are. We, I love the hearts. You're so with me on this, Kathy. I love that. Andrew Neff, I see you, dude. We don't get what we want. We get, we get what we are in life, right? So we should look in the mirror and go, okay, what's up, man? If you don't have what you want in life, look in the mirror and go, okay, how can I change what I see in the mirror to get to become the person that I want to be to get what I want in this life? That's what this whole talk is about. I hope you love it. No one breaks this law of attraction. It's kind of like gravity. We confirm it all the time. What we think about, we will bring about. That's just the way it works. This is why yesterday when I was feeling down, I woke up and it's stormy and rainy and Randy's like, oh, you know, darn, the sun's not out. The day started that way and guess what? It kept going that way. This is why every single morning my mom would wake me up and she'd say, Randy, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. She knew what starts well, ends well. And you got to get the good, to get the, you know, feed the good to get the good, right? Tony, change your perspective, change your life. I'm with you, Tony. Nicole agrees. I love that. <laughs> what you think about brings about. That's the way it works. This is the secret that's in plain sight for everyone to see all the time. Because everyone's life that they're living is simply being man manifested by their thoughts. We are who we are today and what we are today because of what we fed into our mind. And we can change tomorrow, but what we feed into our mind. Greg's with me, right? I love that. <laughs> with you, Jennifer's with me. <laughs> you need an ounce of my energy. <laughs> I got a book coming out on that. You know that? I got a book. I'm so excited. The book's going to be out in about a, maybe a month and a half now. Oh my God, exposing the roots. You can get your copy. It's on some website called preordersrandybook.com, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Our thoughts have brought us to where we are today. And they are taking us to where we're going tomorrow. That's a true fact. It's a fact that no one in this world, I talk about it in the book, no one can play the role in their life that they don't believe they can play. We are who we are because of who we believe we are. And we can change all that. We can change it by feeding new stuff into our mind. I love that, Kathy. Thank you. Thanks for buying a book. I'm so grateful. I'm trying to make your Times bestseller list. And we got to sell a couple thousand more, right? We're getting close. But I need, I need, I need some books more, right? <laughs> So if you get enough of them, we'll treat you to dinner. Oh my God, it's so much fun, right? <laughs> it was so much fun, Gene. Oh my God. <laughs> what you see in your mind, it is true that you can hold in your hand. That is a true fact. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. I mean, my mom proved that to me over and over and over throughout her life. 
Because we were someone with no resources, no money, no nothing. But if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. All the obstacles are really not real. They're all in here. Because I say it all the time, if you want to go somewhere and you want to do what someone did, just do what they did and you'll do what they do. It's true, isn't it? If you want to go somewhere, find someone that's been there. When they're on the way back, ask them how to get there and they'll tell you how to get there. But the challenge is this. In order, in order to do what someone did, you have to think the way they thought. That's what this is all about. It's about changing the image, changing the thoughts. You know, but there is a nice thing going on here, though. There's a time delay between our thoughts and holding the thing in our hand. And luckily so, because that gives us the time to reevaluate our thoughts and think, am I thinking the right thoughts when I'm supposed to be thinking them to get in life what I want to be getting? Because if we get up in the morning and go, man, I'm, I'm so dumb, I'm such a loser, guess what? That's what you will be. And there's so many times, you ever hear someone say that? They go, man, I'm so stupid. I always want to go, are you really? <laughs> I have, I, I'm not bold enough to do that, but someone should do that, right? God, I'm so stupid. Someone should go, yeah, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> like, no one would do that. But if someone else talked about you like that, you would go, how dare you? But yet we become our worst heckler. What are we thinking when we're not thinking? That's the question, right? Denise, you're with me on this, right? I'm way off track anymore. <laughs> this time gap allows us to reflect on what we're thinking. So that way we can readjust it. Because remember the question from all the podcasts ago? I asked the question, what are you thinking when you're not thinking? That is huge. Most people go through life, they don't even realize what they're thinking when they're not really thinking. And there's this negative stream of consciousness going on. And by the way, proven study out of Harvard, we think at 1,500 words a minute. That's a lot of words going through there. They should be good and positive and uplifting in your life. And if they're not, you, we are our own worst enemies all the time. Good or bad, we create our life through our thoughts. You are creating your future by what you're thinking today. <laughs> Think about this. You are the masterpiece of your life. You are the masterpiece of your, of your thoughts. Sylvia, I see a seller. What's going on? I love Jamie. How are you? I haven't seen you forever, right? <laughs> Greg, dude, I'm with you, Greg. <laughs> It's a great day in a person's life when we perfectly understand that our thoughts become things. Our thoughts become things. Every single thing you see was someone's thought at some point in time. Everything. Everything. It was, it was just a thought. And then it became a thing later. You know, you all know, you all know that I'm, I, have, I got faith over here, right? And I really believe that God brought us into existence. Right? He thought everything into existence. You can read Genesis. In the beginning, there was nothing. Right? And God thought everything into existence. Isn't that the first lesson in life? Think your life into existence. This is how it came about. It's the first lesson, right? But then God gave us feelings. Right? And I really believe that our feelings is a barometer of our thinking. Because have you ever felt bad without a bad thought? Never. Never. Have you ever felt good without a good thought? Never. Ever. It always starts here and then it ends up in here. Isn't it the truth? Our thoughts can tear us down or they can build us up. And I tell you, if you're ever feeling bad, just start smiling. I tell you, it'll, all, it'll change your life. Just start smiling. There's been proven studies that if you take a pencil and stick it between your teeth, it makes you smile and you'll feel better. If you take the same pencil and stick it between your, your, your lips, it'll make you frown. You'll feel down. Nothing happened. It's just a physical reaction and your body reacts to it. My mom, I can still remember my mom going like this. I go, what are you doing, mom? She goes, oh, <laughs> there was a negative thought. I'm just, I'm just brushing it off. I'm getting rid of that thing. I'm like, oh my God, right? I mean, this is the way it works. As within, so without. As you think, so you are. I love the hearts. You guys are with me on this, right? <laughs> like it or not, our feelings are at the mercy of our thoughts, good or bad. So when we think the joyful, happy thoughts, we will, the feelings will follow. If we think negative thoughts, you know, dreadful thoughts, well, good luck. <laughs> you will feel just the same way, right? <laughs> the way it works. Missy, I see you too. <laughs> I love that. I see you, Rosé. What's going on? This is also why the Bible says that we should pray for our enemies. We've all heard that verse, right? Pray for your enemies. That's challenging, though. i got to admit. <laughs> People that want to hurt me, I don't really want to pray for them. But <laughs> I can tell you, magic happens. Magic happens when you pray for your enemies. Do you know that it is said 31 times in the Bible to pray for your enemies? 31 times. I looked it up. 31 times. That's crazy. It's in Matthew. It's in Luke. 31 times. See, this has to do with the law of attraction. Because, because you know, the, the, Bible, the Bible says, pray for your enemies. <laughs> it's not worried about your enemy. You're worried about, worried about you. 
Because if you, if you have an angry, frustrating thought about someone else, you're not, you're not affecting them at all, but it's affecting you, right? So we should pray for, this is also why the Bible talks about how you should never curse a deaf person, not even someone that can't hear you. Like, why not? They can't hear you. The Bible's not concerned about the person that can't hear. It's concerned about the person thinking the thought and saying the words, because whatever we put out is going to be, is going to be getting us. Whatever you're thinking is about you, not about anyone else in the world. You with me on this stuff? Oh my God, right? This wouldn't have happened if I wasn't feeling down yesterday. I started listening to podcasts and boom, all of a sudden, here we go. Right? Tina, it's so good, right? I'm with you. I love this. It's so much fun. You know, I really think that love and gratitude are the highest level that we can get to. The highest level of thinking. Love and gratitude. If you ever notice, you do the underground experience, I always open the show with an expression of gratitude. Paula, hello! Paula, I love you. I'm so glad you're doing good. Oh my God. I can't wait to give you a hug again. <laughs> you know, expression of gratitude because it sets the tone. It sets the tone that I am grateful for everything in my life. I'm grateful for the air I breathe, my wife, my babies, everyone I get to work with. I'm just so grateful because grateful hearts attract miracles. And an ungrateful heart, they're, they're just stuck. They're not going to go anywhere. I mean, when's the last time you were in front of an ungrateful person and they're just so ungrateful and you wanted to help them? <laughs> Never. We, we always, we always want to get away from them. We go, oh my God. And that ungrateful person, they stay stuck. Because in order to accomplish anything great in this world, you're going to have to have people's help. One is way too far of a number to accomplish anything grand. You need people's help. So we're going to have to be grateful. I, you know, <laughs> My mom would say, I mean, there was a time we didn't have a car. It was repossessed. My mom got me up in the morning. She goes, aren't you so grateful that you have legs and you can walk to the school bus? Are you so grateful, Randy? And I'm like, I'm so grateful, mom. I'm so grateful. <laughs> I wish we had a car, but I wish so grateful. <laughs> I mean, there it is. Because if you're not grateful for, for your legs, well, good luck. You may lose those too. Be grateful for what you have before life will teach you to be grateful for what you lost. Isn't it true? Love what you have before you have to love what you lost. It works with gratefulness too. Oh, my mom, right, Denise? My mom, something else. Holy cow. I don't even know where I'm at with this presentation anymore, guys. <laughs> By the way, your imagination is a preview of coming attractions in your life. That's a, that's a true fact. Before Tiff and I created the winery, it was all in our imagination. Every bit of it. We sat up on the front porch there looking out and I could see it. I could see the white building with the black shutters. I could see the vines. I could see the grapes. It was perfectly designed in our imagination. And just like that, your imagination is a preview of coming attractions. So imagine if you're imagining negative things in your life. It's a preview of your coming attractions. Get that out right now. Do what my mom did. Go like this. Go, what, 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 is, what is that about? Get that, get that out of there, right? Just brush it off. And actively say it out loud. Go, why did you just think that? Say it out loud to yourself. Why did, why did you just think that negative thought about, about that? Your, your future is so brilliant, you have no idea what is about to happen to you. Because your imagination is a preview of your future life. Positive or negative, that's where it's going. And we should use our imagination to dream the best life we possibly can. You, know, you, know, you all know I got faith here, right? And I believe that God put me on this earth with a purpose, on purpose, to fulfill my purpose. And my purpose is to add value to people's lives. That's why I want to be here with you right now. Because I work hard on this stuff. And I want to add value to you. And I want to tell you that there are seeds of greatness within you. And you have no idea how spectacular it could all be. I love you, Andrew. Hey, man, I'm so with you. God, we should protect your imagination, though. My mom would say to me, Randy, don't ever tell a big dream to a small-minded person. She was protecting the imagination. She goes, you don't want to do that. Because they'll, they'll tear you down. And you don't want the negative on them. They go on the inside of you. Right, Denise? I'm with you. Arlene, I love you. <laughs> I'm Missy. I'm with you. <laughs> she, my mom would say to me, understand how it works, Randy. God blessing you is giving you the ability to bless others. That's how it works. God's blessing you is a blessing to others. There's verses mom would share with me. Out of James, things like that. She would say to me, I remember one time I was complaining. And she'd go, Randy? You have not because you ask not. Like, what, do you, what do you mean, mom? She goes, you have not because you ask not. She goes, go to James and look it up. So I did. And sure enough, there it is. You have not because you ask not. How big is our thinking? How big is our imagination? How grand can our life be? Because I promise you, every single thing that you wish, every single thing that you think that's in your heart, it should be in your life. There's a reason it's there. 
There's a reason you've been given that imagination. And when the people around you try to tear it down, just know it's their insecurities screaming out loud. It's got nothing to do with you. Isn't it true? Right? You with me on this? When I was 10, my mom had me so convinced that I could do anything with my mind, I tried to move Camelback. <laughs> I'm not just Sally looked down. She goes, oh my, this is Randy. My mom goes, Randy, your mind can move mountains. Your mind is the most powerful force on the, in the planet, on the world. It can move mountains. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, are you serious, mom? And I stood there, right? I'm in readers, right? At the Growing Concern School. And I'm looking in the back of Camelback and I'm going, mountain move. <laughs> Nothing happened. You know? But that's how convinced my mom had me that my mind is the most powerful thing in the world. As within, so without. Everyone's life is an expression of what's happening in here. If you want better things on the outside, get better things on the inside. And your life will come to you. It's simply the way it works. Albert Einstein talks about this. He goes, the world we have created, it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. Those are Albert Einstein's words. So I say this, embrace your life. Accept that there's going to be adversity, adversities. There's going to be challenges. People are going to get hurt. Things are going to go wrong. That's the way it works, right? It's our job to maintain a positive attitude along the way. The key is to never allow the negative on the outside to get on the inside. That's the key. Let it just bounce off you like water off a duck. I say it all the time. When we have problems with difficulties, let me say it again. When we have problems with difficulties, we have a problem. Because there are no difficulties. There's only challenges that make you a better version than who you were yesterday. That, that's the key. That's the perspective that can change a life. There is no difficulties. There are no problems. Just challenges given to me to make me a better person. To make me a better version of who I was yesterday. Greg, I love it, man. <laughs> I love you, dude. <laughs> In fact, I can take this one step further. I say... People that have problem, problems with adversities think that they should have none. And just like that, they're entitled. Be grateful that, that the world, that life, that God has given you challenges. Because with no challenges in life, we cannot possibly grow. That's the way it works. It takes a big person to solve a big problem. It takes a little person to solve a little problem. So whenever I get it, give me a challenge, I go, this is wonderful. God must think that I'm, I'm, I can handle this. And just like that, you can handle it. Entitled attitudes never produce a happy person, period. When we embrace the difficulties of life, we no longer have problems. That's a fact. Our world is magically transformed into a world of opportunities. And it's full of joy and excitement to overcome that problem. Can I add with this? Can I tell you this? People pay a lot of money to go to college, don't they? Costs a lot of money to go to college. Some people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to college. And you know what college does? It gives you problems. People spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for the professor to give them problems to solve, to become a better version of who they were. But yet, we have this strange perspective that when I get a problem, it's something, it's a negative thing. It ain't a negative thing. People spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to be given problems. And if life gives it to you for free, that's wonderful, right? Embrace it. This is the perspective that could change a life, change the inside, and everything on the outside must follow. I love y'all. See you guys. Ken, amen. I'm with you, Ken. Sylvia, I love you. Guys, personal growth day at Blue Ridge Winery. What's the date again, Doug? 21st. The 21st. Saturday. Saturday, the 21st. 5 to 6. It's 5. five uh, or, noon to yeah, 6. The 21st. It's called personal growth day at Blue Ridge Winery. Guys, I've gone big on this. I had to become a member of the John Maxwell organization, which was like a $10,000 bill. And then I'm paying all these guys a, a pretty good chunk of money to come speak. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars. We're doing a lot of organization, and I want to give you guys a present. We're charging 20 bucks to come to this thing. Believe me, we ain't making money on this. <laughs> it's a time where I want to add value to your life. These guys are dynamic. They're unbelievable. I promise you. It's a day that you will never forget. Personal Growth Day at Blue Ridge Winery, the 21st of next month, right? right. It starts at noon. Grab a ticket. You can find it on our website, on Facebook. Guys, join me for this. It's going to be spectacular, like really, really great stuff. Thanks for being here. I love you all. Thanks, Andrew. I love you, dude. <laughs> See you, Jennifer. Bye, guys. See y'all. See you, Tina. <laughs>